Hello, I'm Alison Duana. I'm a goddess, asteroid, astrologer and Gene Keys guide. So welcome to today's podcast where I'm going to be um, looking at uh, something happening later in the week called a Venus Moon Portal, uh, which is part of the Venus cycle and shows her uh, descending gates in the morning star phase. So that's the chart I've chosen, um, which I'll show you that a bit. But I really want to focus today on Mars and Jupiter in this very powerful um, conjunction in Gene Key 25, which I've been having this like major flamingo experience with that I wanted to share. Um, I've just begun a new Gene Keys course called the Dream Arc. Um, it's kind of a course that doesn't really have a beginning and ending though as well. I feel like I've been in the Dream Arc for ages and and the course is kind of helping to work with the energy and in, in through the oracle and, and different ways. So if you're interested in joining the Dream Arc, I'll put a link below um, the video. Okay, so let me share the chart first of all, so you can see what is happening at the moment. So um, this is for 27th of May in the early morning. So this portal will take place in America um, tomorrow, Thursday. Um, and you can see here, if I pick up my little spotlight, this is what we call the Venus Inanna Gate. So we're in the fourth um, descending cycle. So this one resonates with the heart chakra and it's in a really beautiful place in Gene Key 3, line 3. So this moves from the shadow of chaos um, and it moves into the, through the gift into the city of innocence. So this is all about reclaiming our innocence. Uh, and innocence for me is like um, almost the realization that we're kind of caught up in this Maya of human experience. So a lot of things happen. We might do things that we, um, you know, we regret, we feel guilty about. And somehow coming back to innocence is, is being able to release and strip away all of that kind of karma. No easy feat, but um, this is what this Venus cycle is all about, is returning to this purity of the inner um, eternal child, if you like, but at the same time, the wise elder. So this Venus cycle is called the Meta Goddess cycle in Capricorn. So that's why it has the specific qualities and it's about integrating the spiritual and the material and the shakti and the bhakti if you like okay so um this is really what i have been powerfully experiencing this week so we've got mars has just moved into aries um and and Jupiter is there as well. So they're one degree apart. Um, and this is the beginning of the zodiac as well. So this point of the zodiac is really important. You know, we finish um, the whole cycle in Pisces and then we begin a new cycle in Aries. So what Mars and Jupiter are saying to us is we are beginning a whole new cycle. Um, for those who are ready, they will feel it. And for perhaps those who aren't, the shadow state is going to become more and more kind of dense, if you like, because the it's trying to push us out of it, really. It's trying to make it so uncomfortable that we have to transform. 
Um, okay, so that is also um, creating a really powerful activation in human design in what's called the channel of mutation. Um, so this is um, gate 60 with gate 3 and Pluto's in gate 60 and this uh, Venus moon um, is in in gate 3 so we're going to have this very powerful activation while Venus is in the 3 the moon will move very quickly but this this chart I'm showing you if you like is will be the pinnacle energy of that and this is about new innovation that's the gift of the 3 um, new innovations coming in um, new things happening so we have this whole energy of of newness um, in this wonderful uh, fourth gate of the heart chakra so um, one of the creatures that has come to me through the dream arc is flamingo which is um, the creature for jinky 25 so 25 is this beginning part of Aries. Um, it's the start of a new cycle, also in the human design wheel of the year uh, and in the astrology, normal astrology wheel of the year. So Flamingo has always fascinated me because um, Flamingo lives in salt pans, which are you know, really toxic environments. There's very little that is able to live in a salt pan. Um, but not only does it manage to live there, but it's also the reason why a flamingo has these incredible, beautiful pink feathers. I've worn my, my pink T-shirt today to honour the flamingo. So... Um, you know, the flamingo actually becomes beautiful because of its toxic environment. So that's a very interesting, like, alchemical energy um, that we can all kind of imbue that because, you know, there's not many of us who can escape from toxic environments and those could be literally like environmentally toxic environments, um, you know, workplaces, our, our families, even our partnerships and children may be emotionally toxic environments. And, and we're all kind of innocent in that because this is the Maya, you know, this is the ancestral karma unfolding and it's very um, hard for us to escape that. So I had a, a wonderful opportunity last week to be in this um, energy on a family holiday actually with my partner's family and this is where Flamingo kept appearing to me and um, and not to make it personal at all, because I think these dynamics are in all families, really. You know, the, the sibling rivalry and the um, kind of trying to win the approval of father was something that was really playing out over the week. Um, and the other thing that was really interesting is um, Jinky 25 has been allocated to England by Richard Rudd, who also lives in England. I live in the north of England. He lives in the south of England, and hopefully we'll meet one day. Um, but he he's kind of given England this jinky, and it's really, I really got an insight into that this week. Um, so the... The shadow of 25 is constriction. And um, yeah, it sometimes feels like England's inhabited by two completely different kinds of people. You know, the Brexiteers, the non-Brexiteers. It was one of the divides that kind of really showed like a different psychology almost of different people. 
Um, but every time you kind of look at a newspaper, especially the most popular newspapers in Britain, you know, they are always um, focused on someone taking something for nothing. You know, whether it's refugees or people on benefits, it's like this obsession with the glass being half empty. Um, you know, someone's always trying to get away with what's ours, you know, um, and, and taking things. And and I think that's, um, you know, I, I, my parents are British, which is why I ended up here. But I grew up in South Africa, actually. But I think, so I think there's something about living on a small island <laughs> as well that particularly intensifies this... Um, idea this like real living from lack you know it's we're here on this tiny island people are trying to take all our stuff you know and we need to protect ourselves from everyone in the outside world and then it also happens like inside the country you know there's all these feckless people <laughs> apparently and and they probably are, but it's, I guess it's about where you decide to, like, focus your attention. Anyway, we were on this boat. It's a narrow boat on a canal. It's moving very slowly. Um, flamingos, swans, ducks, <laughs> all different creatures. But the flamingo stands out. Um, it wasn't appearing as real flamingos, but you know, in sculptures and um, even on a woman's T-shirt that I was talking to. So Flamingo kept coming and things kind of reached this point on about day five of being, you know, in this kind of toxic environment of constriction. And, and by then, me and my partner are feeling the constriction because we feel like we're giving or everything we're driving the boat we're cooking all the food and there's there's no reciprocity and everything we're doing is being complained about so so we're going like more and more like and and getting kind of angry and agitated anyway on day five we moor up and it's quite funny because in the garden just over on the canal is a jesus like a really big jesus and he's in um, the mudra of compassion, which is like this. Um, this is actually Jinky 36, where Neptune is um, very close to 25. And, um, and it was like, oh, we just needed Jesus. <laughs> and even though, like just physically doing this um, compassion mudra, which I'd actually been doing with um my group on soul tribe we've been doing the code on ring of uh divinity of which compassion is one of the mudras so it was like almost just doing it invoking like coming out of that because the constriction that makes you like not want to give you know not want to give anything whether it's love or money or whatever and just like just opening the body immediately changed the whole kind of energy. And just um, thinking about what um, Jesus would be like in the situation. You know, Jesus, I had this vision once, like a teaching from Jesus about superabundance and the fishes and the loaves. And like the teaching was don't ever get caught up in this constrictive view of the world because it's not true you know what i was showing in that miracle was the super abundance of the universe and it was almost like he was so tuned into that that he could manifest that um and this is what i feel we're all moving towards we're moving out of this constricted state with Jupiter is expansive, Mars is like, let's do it, baby, let's break free, um, let's be passionate and, and really embrace um, that openness and generosity, you know, even when it's not coming back, because that's the edge, you know, that's the edge I really found myself at this week. 
and I feel like between Flamingo and Jesus, <laughs> I was really able to like ping open and it, it was amazing because it really shifted the whole energy for everyone. Um, you know, my partner was obviously also getting into Jesus and Flamingo as well. But it was like the last day of the holiday um, was really different. We played this pig game and it just felt like like an openness returned, like that constriction wasn't going to win the day. Um, you know, all this family tension and fighting wasn't going to win the day. And it probably goes back through ancestors and ancestors. And I can tell you for sure it's in my family line. So I'm not picking on anyone's family here. I just really wanted to share this and and also how the animals can help us in the moment. You know, I just kept saying that to myself that um, rather than fleeing the toxic environment, which I didn't have a choice in this situation. Normally, I'd just like line one, I'd be like, Bye, see ya. I'm back to my art studio on my own. <laughs> you know, I couldn't do that. So I had to kind of stay in it. But I know that it's the staying in it that created, if you like, enough pressure, enough tension for that breakthrough to happen. Um, yeah, and it feels really good. So I want to share that and I hope that you have these experiences too with um, Jupiter and Mars and please always write on the channel or my emails there if you want to share anything with me. Um, I offer one-to-one -one readings as well, goddess asteroid readings um, and I'm a Gene Keys guide as well so I'm doing lots of exciting Gene Keys um, things on Soul Tribe online uh, so you can get in touch about if you're interested in being part of like a, a group of people working with Gene Keys on an ongoing basis um, doing all these wonderful <laughs> things together. So namaste. Um, I'm going to be doing another podcast today on um, Hebe, who is the daughter archetype, which really follows on from this. So um, keep an eye out for that. Namaste. Go in peace.